All right, y'all. Welcome back to Hardway Wrestling. Uh, my name is Wyatt. This is Scott. This is Jason, Mr. Cowboy Shithead. Um, and I guess you can call him Mr. Chungus. Um, <laughs> yep. So this podcast and YouTube channel is to focus on reviews, upcoming events, give you our rundown of what's happening in the world of professional wrestling, including indie shows, because uh, there's a video up on our YouTube with Jason. Uh, going to an indie show in West Virginia this past weekend. Bless by God, more near, right near Morgantown, about three hours away from me. Oh nice. wow! Okay. Um, and yeah. So, and then we're also going to intertwine some toys in here as well. Oh, uh, today? Upcoming... No, not no, not today. But oh, at some point, oh, oh. toys are coming. Excited. Let's get so excited yeah. with toys. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I did buy a Jeff Hardy figure from Elite, so I got that yesterday. So that's good. Oh, so that's upsetting. now. Are we gonna are we gonna unbox that here? Or? I'm not unboxing my shit. Are you kidding? <laughs> you don't. You so you don't unbox? No, no I don't. He, he doesn't. Scott's stop. the outcast. I don't unbox. <laughs> yeah, I can see all your Joes in the background still sitting in the box. No, that's that's right. A, that's a discussion for the other channel. Pristine, pristine. <laughs> so obviously we are t- here tonight uh, following the. Catastrophe that was AEW <laughs> Revolution last yep. night. Yep. What, bro? You and I both texted each other saying we were hungover. So don't fucking. Well, I wasn't. I, listen, honestly, I, I wasn't hungover. First off, how's the microphone sound? It's not. It's not too loud, is it? Sounds perfect. Perfect. Okay. I'm sorry for my black thumb. I'm painting my wall. <laughs> no, I, it does, is that wall a different color than it was? Yes, the last time. No, this is the same color backdrop. I'm just now moving our set to this side. Gotcha. So okay. this set is for my sports podcast. This will be for the wrestling podcast. I'm going to be doing the same thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, obviously, we have to talk about the preview show that was pretty much the foreshadowing of the evening. <laughs> um, who the fuck is RJ? <laughs> it could never come back again. <laughs> well, I, I'm gonna. <laughs> I told my I told my girlfriend we're sitting there watching this, and I was like, mm, "There's about a billion other people that could do this guy's job way better." He was so annoying. Oh, he was he, oh, he was over the top annoying to the fact that like I I know everyone that he interviewed wanted to slap the absolute shit out of him. <laughs> oh yeah, no. I mean even Brian. It looked like Adam Cole. Thing. Adam Cole about had it with him. Yeah. So. And that that talk about the weirdest shit. You had the nipple grabbing. You had him smelling Adam I, Cole. I'm okay with the nipple grabbing. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. Like the fact that this guy that, was listen, like, those hey, nipples were hard, nipple. bro. This yeah. nipples are hard. What are you supposed to do? Oh my god! But I mean, you know, just the one match during the kickoff show I felt was a little lackluster. I felt like there could have at least been one more instead of all the talking bullshit. Yeah. So explain to me. Well, WWE doesn't even do a kickoff anymore. No, they just they do a do. bunch of talking. Right, it's a bunch of bullshit. But, but explain to me why we didn't get the Claudia. Why did we get the Blackpool Combat Club that they ri- originally said they were gonna they were gonna show that on Saturday. I don't know, but they did it Friday night, and me and him watched it. Oh, and I missed it. I, I have no idea, and I fast yeah. through a lot Friday of Friday night. Claudio Bravo and Wheeler Yuta won yeah. that match, and that was. Well, I got it. it right. Yeah, yeah, so did I. But we all called I told, it. We were like, okay, they're having a rematch on Saturday. Okay, cool. No, it's just from Friday night. <laughs> okay. Well. I, I think I think somebody in their PR department screwed up and put the Friday night lineup on the pre-show for Saturday. For they, they announced it. They announced it on Friday that it was going to be on Saturday. So, well, hey, well, you know, whatever. Yeah, well, that's, so. that's all fucking Tony Khan's fault. I, I already sent in, I want a rebate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I needed a 10th match. Yes. <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, there were a couple uh, decent matches. I mean, we'll get to those in a little bit. Yep. Uh, obviously, the, the first match of the night being the uh, triple tag team match with um, Mark Briscoe and Seattle Miero. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so how was that match overall? I mean, I, there were moments of sparks, but not a lot to get out of your seat for. Uh, uh, well, it's, go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, honestly, like it, it was okay. I mean, you know, it's the Lucha Brothers. We know what they're going to do. They do the high flying stuff. They do the no tags. They, it's just kind of jumble a jumbled mess of of hodgepodge stuff. Um, honestly, I would have preferred to see Mark Briscoe one on one with somebody else. Um, who is the other three in the? Oh, is the um, um, uh, other Ring of Honor dudes? Yeah, uh, um, Mark I, Sterling. Mark Sterling was on the outside. Sterling, was, um, yeah, 
But and then the Sierra Miedos, Alex was outside. As yeah, well. Alex. Uh, oh, yeah. And both of them getting involved in the match. Yeah, and both, both of them getting the end. and getting involved at the end. That was so, that was actually pretty funny. With was Mark, Mark or was Mark actually a wrestler at one point? Uh, he trained, if I remember. I so, yeah. He trained, if I remember, their podcast on uh, with him and uh, not Carlito. Um, oh my gosh, I've never even heard of him in a while. What's Carlito. um? Cardona, thank you. my brain. Yeah, Matt Cardona, why, Cord- why the fuck did you I, I don't know. My brain just went to Carlito. Bring out the apples for Carlito. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, um, if I remember right on Cardona's podcast, they did talk about Mark doing some training, but he didn't uh, come, didn't go through the whole way with it. So I, Mark, Mark actually trained under Kurt Hawkins at uh, Creative Pro. Okay, okay, gotcha. But yeah, I mean, the match was a decent start off for the night. Again, it was pretty much. Foreshadowing some of the lesser big built up matches of the night. Yeah. Um like I said, if it had been Mark Briscoe against no yeah, one on one and something, that would have been great. We didn't really need Lucha's the Lucha brothers and uh, the other people in the match. It was just kinda eh to me, but Yeah, so. Ari 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 Davari. Um the the weaker of the Davaris for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the varsity athlete athletes. Yeah, varsity athletes. Or or the core of uh lightweight championship uh yeah. wrestling. Yeah, the, no, the, the core the core of what would it, what would be two oh five live two oh five live, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Uh, but here's an interesting question. Speaking of the varsity athletes, and this brings up a, a very interesting point: Where had the varsity blondes gone to? Where's Brian Pillman Jr.? Where well, Pillman was just at a signing here local. Really? Yeah, he was just. But at is, a signing he, is he local. still under contract with AEW? Is he still right? Like, no uh, idea. They lost. They lost the meat of their uh, of their organization to the um, Bla- uh, to, uh, to not the, Blackboard. To uh, yeah, House of Black. House of Black. House of Black. Thank you, thank you. Yes, so, <laughs> so, uh, we're we're, uh, we're, ha- we're, ha- we're both having brain farts. The today. best of the blondes went to the House of Black. <laughs> oh yeah, no, guaranteed. Um, but that one was an okay match, and then the first match of the pay per view. If I can, well, hold on. Let's let's go. Lucha Brothers. I mean, Scott, you did say Lucha Brothers do what they do every time. Uh, Ray Phoenix is probably the best. He that guy. That guy's a that guy's a machine. He is yes, everywhere. He is, he is yeah. a high flyer. He gives no fucks about his body, <laughs> and he proves it every time he's in the ring. I mean, he's just he's an amazing high flyer. Yeah, he's an amazing high flyer. I'd love to see him in a singles run, honestly. Yeah, it could be interesting. It's a good build up. Yeah, I, mean, I think that could be an interesting between if it does happen, they give them that push, giving him a chance against MJF. That could be interesting. A high flyer Ooh. versus someone who runs around. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That, yeah, that could be an that's a, that's a dream at some point down the road. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, MJF said there's no fantasy bookings with him. He don't care who he wrestles. It's all fantasy for everyone else to wrestle him. Yeah. It fits the mantra. It, it's very true, though. It's very true. It fits that mantra. So, yeah, I mean, the match was okay. I mean, the the, the varsity athletes, whatever the f- fuck they're called, <laughs> uh, were okay. I. I didn't like the tight color. It reminded me of the old, uh, what was it? I think it was like Coors Light colors. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I liked I liked the 49er vibe with George Kittle 85 with uh, Penta. But other than that, there was a massive color clash. It was kind yeah, of to look it, at. it was a little, yeah. I, I, I don't mind guys doing their own like color schemes and stuff like that, but you kind of have to do a better job of coordinating if you're going to, if everybody's going to wear almost exactly the same thing, like you yeah. got to do better with that. They all spent their last paycheck on their, uh, on their gear, on their ring gear. gear. At least they have nice ring gear. We got to blow out our paychecks. Hold on guys. And Alex does his thing where he just goes out and buys a fuck ton of transformers and go about yeah. um, which I can't blame him for. Yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> But uh, but the match was okay. I mean, obviously Ray Fenix and that triple obviously win because of Mark Briscoe. Yep. yep. Um, I feel yeah. Like is Mark going to lose another match ever in his life? No, I hope not. No. Nah. Yeah, I really love him. The the whole karate thing kills me. I, I'm I'm <laughs> cracking up first, and I'm I'm half tired. At this point, in the night, I've already driven. I I, I was I had a poker game most of the afternoon. I drove three hours back from this. From this my buddy's house at this wrestling this wrestling event and i was half starting to nod off thinking man how am i going to make it through 37 matches tonight yeah <laughs> and starting yelling going, oh, yeah. and i'm awake i'm awake i feel like i feel like with these matches they're trying to find a perfect fit for mark briscoe yeah um and 
it's an interesting duo between him and Ray Fenix. Could he be replacing Bastard Pack? Yeah, that that in is that a, role because Pat we uh, we haven't seen Pack in quite a while, and Pack was part of the uh, death well, they triangle. all fell out, right? Didn't they fall out over the hammer thing? Not that I believe I, so. Yes, maybe. I think, maybe he, I think you're right. Yeah, it was it was a big deal during their last uh, last year's yeah. uh, pay per view where they kind of had that falling out because. Yeah. Um, Pac wasn't gonna Pac was gonna use the hammer mm. and Ray was like, I don't want to win a match like this. So that was kind of like the falling out and I haven't seen him since. Yeah. Yeah. So and now, it's just another it's just another guy that they don't really know what to do with at the time. Yeah. True. So and then this also does lead to one other question though, with uh Mark Briscoe trying to find out what they want to do with him and where they, the question is what Those is belts. Well, yeah, the tag team belts for one, but uh, what about you know who will I mean will they try to replace Jay after unfortunately Jay tragically passed away in that car accident? Will they try to replace Jay with someone else and have Br- or the uh, Mark and someone else as a tag team until they lose the belts and then put Mark as a single, or are they going? To, is he just going to r- like? retire quote unquote as the tag team champion give up the bells for him and his brother you know being undefeated for them and kind of do that in honor of of his brother and then start something as a singles run on his own um you know because i i can think i i can't off the top of my head i can't think of anybody right now that they could put with mark to make a good tag team but i, I mean can, that- but i don't think that he would leave the other company well, uh, I'm thinking more of the Dudley style. Wait, Devon? Devon can't wrestle anymore. Uh, Wait, Devon's not wrestling anymore. Uh, he, Bubba Ray could. He, well, Bubba's Bubba? in the impact. He could still. Well, they, they do bounce back and forth. They do. Listen, they do no, bounce back. No one's going to replace Jay ever. Yeah. No one's ever going to replace Jay. I, but the I only don't person think that, fits that mantra is Bubba Ray. I don't. Yeah, I don't see anybody in a tag team with him. I mean, the guys. Everyone loves everyone loves the Briscoes, right? And, yeah. and Mark is Mark is fire right now. Why not give I mean, you, you wanna you wanna put some put something on the back of this man? Let's put Ring of Honor on the back of him. Let's give him let's give him a title shot. Let's let's put a big strap on him. Let's let's put those those uh those belts up for in the tag team tournament. And um whether you want to put him in there to try to defend it or not, let's give him a singles run. Yeah, he's been champion before. Was he champion yeah. or was it just? I, well, I know Jay held the title. I don't know if Mark has ever actually held the Ring of Honor title uh, on his own because I know Jay won it uh, at least once, if not twice. A couple times, a couple times. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Jason. Like, yeah, I, I think in my view, I think what they could do is again, like I said, you know, he retires it as the tag team, retires as the tag team champion. Uh, in honor of his brother, you know, the belts then go, you know, uh, uh, they go into a tournament. So, you know, and then, and they could even call it like, a, you know, the Jay Briscoe tag team tournament. Sure, or sure. Jay you Briscoe know. classic or something yeah, like Jay that. Briscoe yeah, Jay Briscoe classic or something in honor of the, you know, and, and make it special for them. But at the same time, and, you know, Jay could even present the belt or, uh, excuse me, sure. Mark could present the belts to the new winners and stuff like that. But I don't see them. Like, it's, in a way, I would love to see them tr- like later on put Jay in, or I keep saying Jay, put Mark, Mark in a yeah. tag team with somebody else, but not right now. Right now, he needs a good singles run. You and- hear that, Tony Khan? I know you're listening. Yeah, <laughs> I know you follow Scott. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he wouldn't follow me. I, I, I would annoy him too much. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know if he was behind you or not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what was the first match? Of the actual pay per view event, I forget. Uh, was it uh, Jungle Boy Christian? No. no, that was the second match. Um, oh well, God. you got the well, we can, does it doesn't matter. I mean, we could just roll right through them here. Well, hold on, Christian. Uh, right. was it Starks and Jericho? Yes, yes. Starks Jericho. That was that was there match one, right. and that I think had the right finish. I, I like. As much as I know Jericho, you know you think highly of Jericho, Jason. I he's well past his prime. He it's time for him to hang up the gimmick. Like I don't care if he's behind the scenes or comes out as a manager only, but it is time for him to hang up the ring gear and transition to other things in the business because that 
Ricky Starks put on a heck of a match last night, and he had to do it with a giant handicap. Yeah, he had to do it with a giant handicap in Jericho. And, you know, I, I give him a lot of credit for what he did. And, and Are you saying Jericho can't go anymore? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying he can't go anymore. He is not. I, the punches he threw didn't look that good. The kicks he threw didn't look that good. Some of the bumps he took were terrible. The one part where he had Ricky Starks roll over the top rope, he didn't give him enough energy to get over that top rope yeah, and like, make the move itself. Like the, his Irish whip where he threw him into the corner to go over the top rope was like, it was just like he just kind of shot him off and Jer- or, and Ricky had to make his own momentum and it looked horrible. Yeah. So mm. like, because wrestlers talk about, a, there's a bit of a follow through, especially with the Irish whip and Jericho, do, because of his age and the fact that he doesn't want to move that much in the ring, he doesn't take the two step, three step follow through to kind of give the guy the extra boost that he needs. Jericho just stands in the middle. You that that was the point where I really saw it, where he just stood in the middle of the ring and just threw Starks, and Starks had to get his own momentum. And it was like, oh my gosh, this is embarrassing. So, so you, you you blame Jericho for for trying to do an Irish whip and and Ricky Starks not being ready and maybe had his feet in wrong position. No, I blame Jericho for not taking the extra two-step deal that it takes to give him that extra momentum, that boost. You, like, you, you know it is a timing move. The hour trip is a timing move. Yeah, okay. When Jer- Okay, so who's who's supposed to do the timing? Is it Jericho? Like- so any anytime you... Any, and and uh, for those who don't know, I have <laughs> been in the ring. Uh, yeah. I, I wrestled back in the late 90s. Uh, every once in a while, I get in the ring now and fall down. <laughs> uh, mostly, mostly because I'm hated. Uh, but uh, when you throw when you throw an Irish whip, uh, you you back them into the ropes, and then you you guide them, and they take off. Right? You can whip them. I mean, it's not an actual. It looks like a whip, but it's uh, uh it, most of it. Most of the time, it's the guy coming off the ropes. That, that if I would take you, Scott, and probably not. But if I grabbed you by the arm and tried to sling you, you and you don't go with it, it's it's it, it's on you, right? So it's a two man. That's a two man move. There, it's on you. If I grab your arm to pull you, and you just jerk your, and you don't go, you know, like sometimes they block those moves. Well, there there is there is the stutter step, yeah. But I never saw that with Ricky last night. I never saw a stutter step. I never saw a, a out of play. Like it was Jericho just standing in one place and just. And he was in the middle of the ring when he did it. Stood in one place, whipped Ricky Starks, and it was just it looked like garbage. Mm-hmm. So. I you know again it does take two people to execute that but you know I really feel like Jericho really kind of you know bum fuzzled that one and like yeah you know, again Ricky Starks gave a heck of a performance Jericho just couldn't keep up yeah and that and that's that's very possible because you know Ricky Ricky's a younger guy and he mm-hmm. moves a lot quicker and he's got very a different athletic. moveset Jericho definitely isn't doing the stuff that he used to do I mean he tries to. He tries to stay away from the code breaker. He tries to stay away from the lion salt, that kind of stuff. So he did the lion salt and the code breaker last. Well, time. but he not not as much as he used to, right? Yeah. So, you know, he used to do shit all the time. Uh, the the man is he's he's an older he's an older wrestler. So sometimes sometimes younger wrestlers moving at the uh, speed of sound uh, <laughs> at times don't. It's, it's not great for an older wrestler. I just still think Jericho has it. Psychologically, he still has it. Uh, he builds these guys. Y- you say it that he does not put guys over, but he twice he's put Ricky Starks over. Easily Jericho could have easily Jericho could have told Tony, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win this one. Then we'll take it to a third match." And he didn't. So uh, I give it to Jericho. Jericho's still doing it, and they're paying him a shit ton of money. He's huge backstage. This is true. He might not be the man in the ring he used to be, but he's still huge backstage, and that's. Yeah. Without Cody Rhodes there, you need a guy like Jericho that can. Oh, uh, and I don't that, disagree, that, but that I can think, lead that locker room. I think Jericho to lead the locker room could be on the mic, could be out there, but he uh, he like his in ring stuff is not. He, he's not like some guy. Like some guys should have hung it up. I, I, I'll, I'll use for example Ric Flair. Ric Flair loves the business. He's done a lot of good for this business, but. Ric Flair should have hung it up about 10 years before he has. And he technically still hasn't because I've heard rumors that he wants another match, even after his quote unquote retirement match. He so, died in that ring that night. <laughs> he, huh? was dead in that ring. he was dead in that ring. That yeah. Night. I, I know it. 
And again, listen, you know, and, and and these guys, when you're in the business, you love the business. You can't get away from the business. It, this business, honestly, is like a drug. When I came back two years, when I came back two years ago, and said, "Listen, I." And I've had I, I have heart complications. I've had two I have two stints now, and I had a heart attack back in a uh, few years ago. I, I'm never supposed to be in the ring, right? I am not supposed to be in the ring again and uh, wrestling. But when you get in that <laughs> ring, <laughs> when you get in that ring, and you feel that you feel that energy, and there's guy. It's it's contagious. It is like a drug. It is hard to get away from. And a guy who's been doing it as long as Chris Jericho, he's been a billion different things. Now he's the Ocho. He was the pain maker. He's, you know, he's making lists. This guy. I did you see gimmick. what happened the other night when he, when he signed that contract for Ricky Starks, he did this. <laughs> that crowd went absolutely ape shit. So, and that's what this is all about. These guys, older, younger, whatever. Feel that energy, man. It is like a drug. And I mean, he's the not cool related. Jericho's the... wrestled till he's ninety years old. Oh god, yeah. oh god! And the other cool thing about that match was when Sammy Guevara came down to the ring and trying to distract, you know, Ricky Starks. And then here comes Action Andretti out of nowhere, yeah. and we Scott were like, "Where the fuck did he?" <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had yeah. no idea. I actually, I thought I nodded off. <laughs> up. You ever nod off and wake up and like, yeah. what's going on? And there was a fight. I was like, "What? Where did I that missed it for come? two seconds?" <laughs> hey, what happened? <laughs> but I think that was cool. So there could be a very interesting um, duo there. I think. I think that actually would be a great tag team action. I mean, if, if, if Ricky, yeah, that, yeah. But, um, but yeah. Well, the, the match if you watched the media scrum last Ricky. night, if you watched the media scrum last night, I, I'm hundred percent. Ricky Starks is not looking to be a tag team partner. Yeah, especially what happened with Powerhouse and Taz. Yeah, he he, he called out Hobbs. He called out uh, Hangman. He called out. He he looked at Tony Khan and said, "Kenny Omega." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that match was a, was a good start to the night with uh, yeah. Jericho, you know, taking the loss. Yep. Um, let's see. We have what was good next? for Ricky Starks. Yeah, no, seriously, great for Ricky Starks. Yep. Next was Christian Harmon or Christian and Jungle Boy, I think. All right. Well, we'll just go with that one. Yeah. Um, yep. Christian Cage and Jungle Boy, or Jack Perry. Hopefully, the Jungle Boy is almost over. Hopefully, he just goes by Jack Perry. I don't know if you will or not, but the match was okay mm. for a coffin match. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, going into the crowd was cool, but I have to admit, I was getting really tired of Christian Cage going from "I'm going to hate you," "I'm going to be a bitch," "I'm going to hate you," "I'm going to be a bitch." Like, yeah, can you figure out which one you want to be first? <laughs> <laughs> like, I felt like most of that match, he was just running around the entire time. Like, no. who's got yeah. who's got more left in the tank, Christian, Christian or Jericho? Christian, by Christian. far. Yeah, yeah, I was not impressed with Christian last night at all. I wasn't either. I, no, I, we, I wasn't, either, I wasn't but... either. But I feel like again, if the issue is, it's not just the um, the ability. Like Christian has more ability in the ring than Jericho does right now. But Christian also is really good on the mic. Really, really good on the mic. They just need to give him something to work with. Yeah. And the problem is they haven't get like this whole Jungle Boy thing is just continues to be an albatross around Christian's neck. And he's not, like, I could see Christian and Ricky Starks being something that they could use to build Ricky to, you know, keep building him to the next level. Um, I You're could, saying Christian is above Jericho. Yeah, very Ooh. much so. Very Ooh, much. So. Do you drink something today on before this? <laughs> I would give Christian the physique that option, but for momentum swingers, it goes Jericho. Yeah, Jericho is Jericho is the top of the list, bro. When it comes to these older guys in there, it's well, it's I would even put him above, it's Jericho above puts Sting. himself on the top of the list, but other hey, than that, he's doing a hell of a job. He got me convinced. Yeah. <laughs> but, but Jungle Boy gets the win against Kristen Cage. Um, that I, match wasn't great. I didn't think it was great. I, I actually, um, the whole, uh, the outside the ring stuff by the casket was great. I thought that was good. Yeah, that was. I got good. sick of them cutting back and forth. To is he married to his sister? Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't even know. I I kept saying is that I, I didn't even know. Like I'm, I'm yeah, saying, no. And every match was... is every match. It's it's about his father and and I get it. Luke Perry he passed away. Every, you know, people people die, and I, I get it. I get it. I'm so I'm not shitting on that. But years ago by now, three I think. Yeah, you know, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while now. But it's honestly, three. I get it. But they're 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 using that as the storyline for everything with Jungle Boy, and I just we need something new. 
We need something. Yeah. Yeah. And especially considering Luke Perry died in 2019. Yeah, yeah it was. Okay. Yeah. Three years okay. ago. So leave, let the dead rest, man. <laughs> like, good God. I mean, yeah. it was like if they had capitalized on his first year in the company and really made that his story, then it would have worked. But now three years in, there's just no reason to keep beating a dead horse, as people like to say. And, you know, I think you could have gone with the phrase there. Yeah, beating a beating a dead Luke, maybe. I don't. Yikes! That was not the best. Phrase. He he's definitely uh, he's definitely an up and coming guy in the ter- he, oh, is, he is. He I don't even want to say up and coming because they're all on the same level playing field as with the story writing going on right now. The, mm-hmm. So uh, he's definitely he's one of the he's one of the young guys. It's going to be something in his business. Hopefully, he puts a little bit of weight on. Um, but and um, gets better on the mic. That's his. Uh, that's yeah, his other I, Achilles heel. Yeah, he a lot of guys aren't. A lot of guys aren't great talkers. He still could go in the ring. He's great in the ring. Oh my god! Yeah. Maybe we. Maybe they put him with Vicky Guerrero or something. I don't know. No. Ooh. No, she's actually leaving. She's actually leaving. She didn't resign. Well, she, where's she going back to? WWE? Maybe Probably retire. Yeah, she's done. I think she steps down oh, and just okay. goes away. Because she's already pissed off with WWE using Dominic as the next Eddie Guerrero. That's true. And she doesn't want to see that shit. It's pissing her off even more. <laughs> yeah, I saw that comment. Um, and it's true. It really was evident that they're really pushing him to be a next Eddie. And it really irked me. And I'm like, guys, dude, really? Yeah. I, think not- I just use that as an angle to piss everybody off. Yeah. <laughs> um. So let's see. We talked about that one. So good on good on uh good on Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy did a great Christian. job. Great, great for Christian. I mean, it was still a good showing for Christian. I just don't. There's an old guy in every match now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, all Pretty these old much. guys are back in every match. So I will say the one part that I found surprising was the end when he slammed the lid and the casket just drops out of sight. That was I, cool, right? I, I didn't even like, see that coming that either. Like. I was like, whoa. And first thing I, go away, man. <laughs> first thing I thought was, oh man, they fucked this up like they did the um the exploding bar wire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I thought too. I was like, something just screwed up with the He's whatever dead. that lift was on. <laughs> it just bye, Christian. Christian's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I actually the just uh, also the one thing I would have kind of found interesting is they had the hole there. I would have liked them to kind of do uh, the two matches in one casket and buried alive. Because that actually, they had the hole already there. So, I, you know, it could have been interesting. Put him in the casket, bury the casket. I don't know. But that's just... even better if The Undertaker would have sat up out of that thing. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the funny thing. When they first opened it, it, I was waiting for Luchasaurus to yep. go, hey, guys. Yeah, 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 right. Did you? I mean, I thought the same thing that there was. Yeah. I was expecting been... Luchasaurus to be in the casket, but no, Chris was like, I got chairs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. That's a good move, too. Didn't see that coming either. It wasn't a bad match. It was, yeah, a, bad. It was, it was a good stepping stone. Sure, sure. Um, let's see here. Let's talk about the elite versus the House of Black. Mm-hmm. And Jason and I have about an aftertaste with that because we picked the elite to retain. <laughs> we did pick the elite to retain. I, well, I, and the other day when we spoke, I did not pick the elite. I picked House of Black, and I changed it. I changed it yesterday. I changed it, and I was like, I wish I would have changed it. I wish I would have changed it. <laughs> I don't know it why looked, it looked like came... the elite was going to go over. It just it, it really did. did there were moments, like yes. I mean, I but again, as we talked about on our last show, like you know, you got to look at it from the, the the backstage politics of it. Like Omega is on his way out by October, and the elites contracts are up in November. So as we talked about on the last show, you know, these guys look to be sitting out the rest of their contract and maybe make sporadic appearances here and there in that time frame. So if you're not going to want to do anything or, you know, want to be seen like, I mean, they could be the next Brock Lesnar where they hold the belts and just never show up on camera until they're they're absolutely needed. But it made more sense for them to drop it to the House of Black, let the House of Black try to get this trio's title actually over for once and see where it goes from there and then just sit out the rest of their contracts and kind of do nothing for a while. So I, I, you know, I think that's, that was the safest bet, hence why. And for those of people who don't know, uh, the three of us are all in a wrestling league, hence why we're talking about you know who we picked and who we didn't for for Sunday night's thing. Uh, yeah, that's why I picked the House of Black to win both on the podcast and on my my picks, uh, just because. Hey, you know, I I really thought that was I I if the if 
the young bucks went to kind of like you know what we're done we just kind of want to do our thing then you know it makes sense to go to the house of black and drop the belts to them so but that was just my take i think yeah. it was a good pushover for the house of black to be yeah. you know them but i have to admit they need to get another fucking move yes no more Tired su- of the goddamn super kicks. No you more don't like super the, v- kicks. the V triggers. You don't like the no. V- no, the, 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 That's all they use. Yeah, the V trigger and the super kick. Like they uh, need- you guys, I tell you what, these the they are good wrestlers. They really are good wrestlers. And they the style that they wrestle is an AEW style. This is this is their style. They fly all over the ring. They're they're they they have actually honestly that their tag team moves are damn near elite. If I could steal okay. their name. So they, they work so well together. They look so good on every aspect of what they do. Name me other than the super double super kicks. Name me one uh, tag team maneuver they do together. Other well, Meltzer driver and the super kicks. What are the? Because I didn't see any last night. All I saw were them super kicking each other or super kicking their opponents. Super kicking each other. Yeah. I mean, they probably would if they get were given the chance. But. So it was, it was, it was, you know, triple threat. So or it was a, you know, uh, trios. trios. So they got to work with Kenny too. But <laughs> again, they, the everything we saw, ninety percent of it was a super kick. Whether it's individually or as a, a group, they were super kicking everything. It's like, guys, get another move. There's a there okay. are plenty of moves well, out there. When they when you when you when you the style that they wrestle that is that is it that they have they have three 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 or four big moves that they do a lot of Brock Lesnar does the F five the F five the F five oh yeah and the F five <laughs> and nobody says anything about that right I mean who would right who's saying anything but about it? it's a power move a super kick is not like. Ever since Shawn Michaels, the super kick has kind of started to become overused. And by guys that, like, okay, for example. Well, you remember the DDT used to be the final. If you got DDT, you were done, right? Yeah. If Jake DDT, you did, the match yep. was over. Yeah. Now everybody throws a DDT, right? That's all, that is also true. So but- wrestling has definitely changed over the years. I just can't, I can't, I'll never understand why, why, and why you think that these guys aren't good. They, they're, the Bucks are good tag teams, mm-hmm. and when they move on and they go to the WWE, they are going to be they are going to be at the top of the tag team list. There, mm-hmm. we'll see about that. Happen. You you're just biased because of Jim Cornette, and that's no, I am biased because I'm tired of watching the same. It, it's and it goes back to this issue with Orange Cassidy. The you know the same move set. Like I'm tired of hearing the same joke over and over and over again. I'm tired of watching the same moves. Over and over and over again. That's what the Young Bucks do. That's what Orange Cassidy does. Buy me a wrestler that does this one move, one, two, three, 12, 13 different moves. Find me a guy that does that. Besides oh. Daniel Bryan, there's plenty of guys. Well, go ahead. We got time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we... I'll be here for you. <laughs> right, these guys, these guys all. This is this is what they do. Like this is why this is why moves are protected. Now the super kick is not protected. All right, so let's just let's just take uh, let's take Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens asked permission to use the stunner from mm-hmm. Stone Cold. Stone Cold gained permission. That's his move now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is anybody else doing that? No. No. Okay. So, what other moves does Kevin Owens do besides the stunner? He's got the pop-up Sen- power bomb, the cannonball into the corner. Sen- Senton. Yeah, Senton. But he the- does it. He's he does those same moves, right? Those same four or five moves. And that's 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 their move set, right? It's not video games where you can True. up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, and you, you throw up 17 different combos. These guys all have move sets. This is this move set is specific to Jungle Boy. This movie is specific. This move set is specific to Mark Jackson or whoever. They 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 all have different move sets. That's is it Matt Jackson? Matt Not Jackson. Man. Matt Jackson. Mark, Mark Jackson. You, his you, co- you doing, sorry. Mark, his, hold up. Mark his cousin, Briscoe and Matt Jackson. His cousin. Okay. His cousin. Right. <laughs> it, it, okay. So if uh, if if uh, they don't do the BTE trigger or the being the elite or whatever they call it, the elite trigger or what is yeah. it called the triple the B, double B, B, uh, BTE, BTE trigger. Yeah. All right. If they don't do that BTE, are you gonna go? Okay. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> Why do we? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? They, these guys have a specific moveset, and that's just what they do. When you play the video game, 
Are you when you take when you take uh say you play the WWE video game and you have Brock Lesnar? Are you is Brock Lesnar doing dives over the top ropes? Fuck no. That's not in his <laughs> that's not his that's not I his can make him do that. I can see I, that. Well, you, you, you can, but he's gonna catch his feet on the ropes and end up on like uh <laughs> like uh what lived live Morgan <laughs> oh, on her face, right? oh, Jesus. So these guys all have specific movesets, and that's just how like you come to expect you Okay, Ric Flair. No, did how many matches did Ric Flair win without the figure four? Not many. Mm-hmm. Right? That was his moveset. But but when you threw and... Ric Flair into the corner, what did Ric Flair do? Somebody tell me. The the face flip first. up. Yeah, yeah flip, flip up over, flip. run down yeah. the apron. He used to run down the apron, climb up, and then come yeah. off. Then they started catching him. He run down the apron, get clothesline. Right. Yeah. That was every match. But they all have the wrestlers have movesets. But again, Pockets. Ric Flair, Orange Cassidy. Yeah. He's always put his hands in his pockets because you know you expect. Ha ha ha! That's funny. Dan Housen. <laughs> Yo, if if Matt Jackson looked at somebody and did this, would you be like, "Oh, motherfucker, stole the stole the moves"? He can't be doing that. But at the same time, it would be different. Like if he went and tried to use a Dan Housen or I mean, I like I almost would find it. It would funnier. pop you right. If he huh? did something like that, it would pop you. Just like last night a couple times. Uh, what did uh, Ricky Starks... No, somebody did, uh, somebody did someone else's move, blocked it, and then they did their finisher. Oh, was well, it Ricky I think Starks? it was MJF. Was it MJF? MJF got Daniel to tap out on his own submission. Yeah, see, and that's not what he does. And he also so imitated that, Jeff Jarrett as well. Yeah, that was, right. that was he did the Jeff Jarrett strut, which I thought was funny. Because MJF doesn't give a flying fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's the thing, and going back to the Ric Flair deal, yeah, Rick did the same several moves in every match, but Rick wrestled an hour every night, and Rick's move set was vi- like, yeah, he did his classics. Everybody does their classics, but when you're doing the same, like you have a ten to twenty minute match, and you're doing the same moves. Over and over and over again, ad infinitum without adding something else in there. Again, super kick, super kick, super kick, super. Kick. That's all we saw was a ton of super kicks and then the V triggers and the BTE trigger. Like, there's other moves out there that you can do in between those moves to add spice to the match. Same thing with Orange Cassidy and putting his hands in his pockets. There's other things you can do besides putting your hands in your pockets. My and, dude, my dude took five moves yesterday with his hands in his pockets. He did really well. And that though. is legit skill. <laughs> Whether you believe it or not, dude. And then he does a kip up <laughs> with yeah. his hands in his pockets. Get out of here! Like these these guys are these guys are elite athletes, and you're like shitting on because their big move is a super kick. You're not supposed to kick I out. Have of to that. admit, hearing that is, Jason that's the end all be that, all. As, hearing Jason explain that to me makes sense more because I'm not big into the wrestling scenario. Like you two are, so hearing that makes a lot of sense. And what does everybody say that the that the um, Jacksons have over everything else? Their super kicks, like you said, will be their classic move. Yeah, you put it in video games. Put it in video game form. Yeah, but here's the thing: it already is. It's not in, in in video <laughs> yeah, game right. form, all that's going to be is super kick, super kick. That's all they're going to have. Like in a video game, and, and yeah, here's how I like. I do when I like used to do No Mercy, for example, on six and N64. And I know that's going to date me for a lot of people out there. Uh, but I create my character and I had a varied moveset. I had suplexes. I had uh, punches. I had, you know, I had all kinds. I had dives over the top rope. I had submissions. But that's what made your character your character. So that's the same as yeah. the elite. Do you only do the suit? Do you only do the suplex ones? But I had multiple suit. I had the oh yeah, multiple, multiple. You had variations of the suplex. (laughs) But again, a a a German versus a belly to belly versus a die a suicide dive versus you know. So you uh, just said two throws, okay? A belly to belly, (laughs) a belly to a belly to belly, a (laughs) belly. No, belly to belly German. You have uh, underhook suplexes. You have you know tiger driver suplex. You have a ton of. Of options. Did you use, did you have all them? Did you yeah. use them all? Okay. Yeah. I again I, I varied my move setup. 
That's how, you know, I because again, variety is the spice of life. If you see the same thing over and over and over again, you get tired of it after a while. So this is why I used Hogan, because he was so over in the back, I was never losing and during No Mercy. <laughs> say Okay, say that again? <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, fair <laughs> We're going to agree to disagree. But this- so the House of Black take the win. They get the titles. Um, and as we've agreed... Brody King, is Brody King not a fucking animal? Yeah, dude, he's... he's I wild. fucking love Brody I love, King, dude. I love watching him. I lo- man, dude, those shoulder blocks he was throwing... Yeah. That's how big man's move. That's how big men's moves. And then watching him do the suicide dive, I'm like, bro. What? Yeah, exactly. A guy his size shouldn't be able to do that. He's but... trimmed. He's trimmed down a good bit too. He looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why don't we move on with the tag team idea with the tr- uh, the the four way? Now, as we get into it, it was the guns, the acclaim, Jay Lethal, and Jeff Jarrett, and then Orange Cassidy and Danhausen. Now. Before we get into that, this was a note left on the seats of fans at Revolution last night. And I quote, Dear AEW fan, welcome to AEW Revolution. We appreciate you coming here to see us defend our titles. We know we're the reason you're here. The amount of ass boys chants has become a distraction at AEW shows. Please refrain from shouting, chanting, or whispering ass boys at any point in this evening. Please also refrain from chanting daddy's favorite, who's your daddy, booty boys, and similar phrases. We're the most important part of the AW family, and we expect to be treated with respect all millennials deserve. Genius. Oh. Genius. If you fail to follow the above, we will have security to remove you from the building. Genius. Thank you to remember, and hashtag still, Colton and Ashton Gunn, not Ash, Ass Boys, end quote. <laughs> Genius. They wrote, the, they wrote the fans a script, what the hell. Uh... God. How many people were holding papers up going? Well, yeah, and here this is the note from AEW. Ass boys <laughs> on on the on the chair, so it was there. Wow, that's I gotta, I gotta have that. I gotta have that. I I'll gotta. Say, get I'll, I'll save the pick for you. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna find out who's selling one on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need it. Oh my. And again, look at the, like, that's another thing about the guns, which I was so glad that they retained. The gun boys, like, they, they, they're they such good heels that to have that printed out and put on everybody's chairs is freaking hysterical. So that makes, that just shows you how, um, how far they're willing to go with this character with the, the, these gimmicks and stuff like that. Um, so it, like, again, they're still green and they still can use a lot of work in the ring, but I think they are really going to come into their own here soon and, you know, become that, you know, good tag team that they can be uh, with or without their dad as a manager. I still think their dad should have been their manager and waited for a while to break that whole thing up. But the fact that he's with the acclaim really guns with the acclaim. Okay. It's still cool. It's still funny to it's watch. It's hard to hate the guns when Billy's so loved, you know, yeah, if you put, it, if you put it, Billy it's, back it's, with the guns, true. it's going to be hard to build. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it's, that guy's it, an, that guy's an icon. Yeah. That guy's an icon. I mean, and like every time you see him when he has his shirt off, it's like, what is he taking? Like he's Nothing. still he's just everything. fucking going to the gym. Yeah. He's still he's ripped it all. But he's um, taking it all. I mean that that, that four way was actually a pretty good match to watch. Yeah, I, mean, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed that. the four way. And this is one of the best matches of the night. Yeah, yes, man. And I this thought and the night. this is gonna be funny. I thought Orange Cassidy and Dan Hudson actually did a really good fucking good job. Last they time. did. Yeah, they were they did exceptionally. They well. really they did. They, they, they a couple minutes, and that was the funny thing. Well, Dan Dan Housen, he actually surprised me. I was like, "There's no way they're putting the belts on these boys, right?" Because they had me. They had me sort of kind of leaning that way. Like, so close. But I was like, are you serious? Like, Dan, how's it? Dan, did you see that German that Dan threw out of the corner? Yes. Oh, yeah. That was impressive for him. Oh, I was just about to fall off my couch. <laughs> and then I was like, what pinning the to take the title. I was like, oh, my God, they might get it. <laughs> anyway, I, was, I was surprised. Like, We're going to need a bigger book bag. Yeah. <laughs> No, they each get a book bag now. Yeah, <laughs> but I was the the thing I was interested in is uh, how long they were going to spend in this match because of Jeff Jarrett. I knew Jeff wasn't going to tolerate any of that insane because at the very first when they started, I was like, if he gives Jeff the the shin kicks, this match is deader than four o'clock. But they I, they actually kept the Orange Cassidy and Dan Housen stuff to a minimum, which actually made the match better. 
So yeah. I give them compliments on that when they were in the ring. It made a difference and it made, uh, you know, it, it made everything count for more so that when Jay Lethal and Jeff were in there or Acclaimed was in there or the guns were in there, you know, when those three were having their stuff, you know, the little bits of Dan Housen and Orange Cassidy that they had made the match, you know, it took it helped to amp the match up a little bit more. So I was I was happy. I was impressed. And you know, again, Gun Boys came out. Now, also, what did you guys think of Max Max, uh, ah, ah, Max Caster's rap? That was they had they hit hard with that one. So yeah, no throwing the all throwing his the gummies into the ring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all, all his sh- uh, the the Cialis the Cialis. Yeah, all his all his shit is hard. Yeah, I, I never was a Jeff Jared fan. Never really cared for him. What well, didn't really get his? I mean, I get it. The Fargo strut, right? Yeah. I get it. I mean, he's. The, I saw the the watch the flare the flare death match. Sorry, <laughs> watch the flare match, uh, and uh, I I have grown to really like Jeff Jarrett. This guy is the ultimate heel. Now, yeah. That being said, he will. He doesn't care if you're a man or woman. He will put his hands on you. Yeah. Did you see him shove Aubrey? Yes. Yeah. Yo, he the first time I was like, okay. He was actually pissed off with Aubrey. Yeah. Yo, it looked like, and then he shoved her again. I was like, oh, motherfucker's about to get assault charges. Yeah. <laughs> like he did Aubrey the same thing at the at the Flair match where he shoved Flair's girlfriend or whatever, a wife or like I was like, wow, Jeff is a wife beater. Yeah. Jeff well, hey, I mean, bitch. <laughs> back in the nineties, he was ready to bitch slap China when they had that final match for the IC title where China won, and Jeff Jarrett was about to went to back to WCW. You know that was uh, his idea, right? Huh? That was his idea. No, it uh, to bitch slap her. I mean, no, maybe, to, but for her to go over. No, it was not his idea. Oh, he I thought told, it was. No, 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 that was Vince. Oh, uh, Jeff, that's good because shit. Jeff didn't want to lose to a woman. So know. Jeff was, Jeff said to them, he's like, you pay me a hundred thousand and I was $150,000 and I'll do this job for China on the way out. So, and then he like, literally he's then he, that was that day at the paper. That was no mercy 99. Uh, and then he kind of, what was his he, move set on a video game? Not very good. <laughs> um, everybody's got a price. <laughs> what? You're Everybody's got a price. That's DiBiase, dude. For the million dollar man, he said one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Shit. Well, sh- but no, um, he can peg me for one hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars, bro. <laughs> but no, so but the the rest of the story is Jeff took a little bit to think about it and went back to Jr., who was the liaison between him and Vince, and he said, "Make it two hundred and fifty. So Jeff got a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar payoff. To drop the belt to China that night because he Damn. did not want to lose to a woman. So he's like, hey, you know what? I'll make it worth my while. I'll get my money out of this. And, you know, Vince's old expression, I'll do whatever it takes to get the match in the ring. So he paid Jeff off and Jeff lost the belt that night. But yeah, and like, he took all that money and he tried to start global wrestling and he yeah. lost it all. And that's the end <laughs> of the story. I have to admit, with the match, I mean, one of the highlights was Sanjay's big man getting absolutely <laughs> annihilated in the nuts by Dan House and the orange Dude. punch by Orange Cassidy and whatever the fuck gun put on that. Yeah. That, that might have been the worst famous or Billy Gunn has ever thrown, but yeah, that was, I mean, it was too, so funny. It, it, was, was, it was a bad execution, but it was funny. It, it, his, his, yeah, he, he, I legit got smacked in the mouth on that one. <laughs> so, uh, he, he, I think his face just cut crap. I don't think he took it well. No, uh, but it was it was pretty good. Uh, it wasn't a it wasn't a leg. It was his ass cheek. He ass boyed him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> off the mat. But yeah, but I mean, honestly, this was this was a good match. Uh, I really thought the acclaim were going to go over. I thought thought they were going to really? throw the belts, but yeah, I did. I that was another one. I really thought the gun. I I changed that one too. I'd have had a perfect night last night. <laughs> Two of them I changed. <laughs> well, of course, the biggest and the biggest moment last night. You know, the ass boy saying they're the best in the world now. Nobody can touch him and. Hearing that FTR music go off, yeah, was fucking fantastic. That was that was hysterical. Because again, why and I just popped big time for that. Because it was like one of the best pops tonight. Yeah, that was an amazing pop for the crowd last night. I I was I was very happy to see them back. I am hoping that they're going to do something because and this this is when I say that the the Gun Boys can get better. This is how they do it. Put them in there with an experienced tag team like FTR. Didn't they beat but, FTR once? Uh, not that I'm aware of. 
I thought they beat. I thought they wrestled FTR and beat them. Not that I'm aware of. I don't remember. They may have, but then again, there's been so many matches in AEW. But I don't with uh, the speculation with FTR, EW Insider is saying the belief backstage is FTR signed a long term deal with AEW. Really? Okay. Really? Just signed it. That is why they came back last night. Interesting. If, if that if that is true backstage, that is why they came back last night. Wow. Because they signed that long term deal. See, so. I kind of expected them to write out their contracts and go back to WWE now that Triple H is in charge. But I mean, maybe they just are. I'm hoping Tony uses them the right way this time. If not, I'm gonna be. Pissed. Yeah. Wow. So all that that whole all that podcast that that Dax was was doing, it was all a swear. Uh, I mean, hey, <laughs> he sounded mad as shit. Well, maybe maybe throwing shade the way he did got Tony to realize I need to keep these guys, or otherwise they're, he's gonna, they're going to do damage against me for my competition. So, but that's you know it'll be interesting to see what you know what kind of contract if it's true, see what kind of contract they got. So, how much they're making. But yeah, no, that's that's great to hear that yeah. FTR is going to stay. And it was, with- and it was great to see FTR come back. I yeah. really wanted to see him wrestle again. Ever since their matches to claim the New Japan Tag Team Titles, I was like, these guys are it. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they are it. Um, so that does it for that one. Whee! All right, so let's talk about the period match. I mean, the um, Texas Death Match tonight. Uh, John Moxley and Hangman Adam Page cost me money. Yeah. <laughs> so me money. let's explain that. So watching the match. I made the joke to Scott. I was like, okay, what happens if Moxley bleeds in the first four minutes? <laughs> and I put it in our group chat that we have, and I'm like, all right, bet somebody that the uh, the under is under four minutes. Yep. And Jason's like, okay, I'll take that bet. I'll put it at the over. Yeah. <laughs> it is sitting in my cash app <laughs> because at three minutes and 27 seconds, <laughs> the ref puts on his gloves and Moxley's bleeding from his forehead. Oh, we were Dying last so night the best part of that is because I ran my timer. I was running my so timer. Did I? I ran a timer. And they cut him and they didn't show right yeah. away. And I was like, just keep the camera off of him for 30 <laughs> more seconds. <laughs> Please. So it, what was it? It was uh it was 327 or it was whatever. About three minutes 27 seconds. Yeah, 320, 327 and 342. I was set to cash out. <laughs> yep. Exactly. That we were, we, why and I were just dying last night. But I mean, again, Moxley loving the blood, it is quite <laughs> disturbing. I'm so well, sick of it. How has he not gotten a staph infection yet? Yeah, <laughs> or HIV. Now, I just, I, I don't, I'm not sure that Adam Page really got color. I know Mox did, Mox you continued it to bleed. It was something, I don't know what it was. It, he cleaned up pretty quick. I, he no, I agree with quick. that. You know, when, and, when, you, when well, you bleed like that, it, I don't know. I mean, he could have gotten a pap smear, like uh, as Cornette likes to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what Cornette calls it. So I, I'm just. Uh, it but, it, no, like, it looked didn't, like cowboy shit is what it yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't cut deep enough and the blood just kind of soft after a while. So, you know, hence the reason why he cleaned up so fast. But again. Who knows? I mean, I yeah, don't know. I, Mox was digging whatever that. I don't know that if that fork, was a, fork, a fork from that's Denny's or what that was. But he was just jamming that shit into his head. He was like, "This is mine now. Your head is mine." Like it was a it, legit. He, I thought he was trying to like he's the Michael Myers. Yeah, of yeah. AEW. He, he's he got was, that. He's got that Cactus Jack re- resolve with him now. Yeah, <laughs> it's really offsetting. It's really like now you're trying to be psychotic. <laughs> yeah, and if he could do it as well as Cactus Jack, we wouldn't have a problem. Well, but true. unfortunately, all I can think was he was going, "You're gonna bleed. You're gonna fucking bleed." <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you think or what you say. You're gonna if I'm if I'm losing, you're bleeding. Oh my and god, I mean, that was. And of course, there's a there's a, a shot from uh, Twitter because that's what I'm looking at right now is the, the wrestling feed from Twitter last night. Uh, one of them was a picture shot of the barbed wire chair in the corner. Okay, and you can see a chunk of hair from oh from, from that hand. age hitting the chair. Yeah. I'm like the, the the what he was doing to his back with that barbed wire. And his, yeah, oh, oh. I know, right? I I just did what no, he's like did. this the entire night. Ah. No, don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was it was cringe. I'm not one that's squeamish over, but it's like 
just thinking about what that feels like on your back getting like because you could see the furrows as he just rakes the barbed wire up his back i'm like oh no i yeah. we're gonna have to have chucky on here one day chucky manson is a uh local no, indie no, wrestler. No, you gotta do it right you gotta do it right you gotta get fucking <laughs> horn swoggle the <laughs> Chucky match just to come out with a knife. It's time to go out for Mox. <laughs> we'll have to have Chucky on the show and 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 let him uh, let him tell us exactly how that shit feels. He walks. Moxie's gonna walk like like Manson. Like he's legit gonna walk like Tim walks with a limp. Yeah, walks leaning to the right side. Like he took that that shit abuses your body. Yeah, I. But we've talked about this before. Moxley bleed. Moxie bleeds constantly, and there's nothing special about it because he's always bleeding. And yeah. then when they get to the main event and MJF is bleeding, it yes, doesn't really matter, it, right? It doesn't yes. matter. Yes, and I even I even said that to Wyatt. I was like, when I saw the MJF part of it, I was like, why did they do the blood in the in the Moxley match if MJF was going to bleed? Because well, that M- Moxley's never not bleeding. Oh, I know. I oh, know. No, it's it's he's, part of his. It's it's his uh, classic skill set. Yeah, <laughs> that, Hit that, him with that's, the tampon. That's the, only, the only move Moxley knows how to do: bleed. Yeah, Pre- pre- press uh, X, Y, and Z to make Moxley yeah, bleed. Every, I needed him to bring out the pizza cutter. That's what I needed. <laughs> yeah. And the good thing is the match actually had you on the ropes, even though yes, there was a lot of blood and gore. But the match itself had you going. Was it going to be Mox? Was it going to be Paige? Was yeah. it going to be Mox? Was it going to be Paige? And I mean, I it's like I had picked Moxley for our especially our pool. the curb stop. Yeah, on the bricks that was, and the fact that he pulled the curb stomp out, I was like, hey, like he should have looked up at the camera and waved, "Hey, Seth Rollins," and just you know, like, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else did that curb stomp before. Uh, for him, I can't remember who that was. I can't. I I don't remember. I thought it was an ECW guy. guy. Maybe, maybe I I don't know all the ECW finishers, but yeah. um, but yeah, no, it I, it was an interesting match. It was it was good. It kept you. I thought it was a good match too. Yeah, yeah I mean, it kept you guessing who was going to win. I mean, Adam Page had the momentum. Moxley had it. I mean, it just went back and forth. It was great. Yeah, yeah. They needed um, to end this rivalry. Uh, Adam Page needed this win for sure. Yeah, I'm glad he got it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go. I'm going to talk about the two worst matches of the night, in my opinion. <laughs> so we're going to go with uh, the AW Women's Championship between Jamie Hayter, Soraya, and Ruby Soto. Bathroom break match. So. That's when I got my dips and chip. Yep. <laughs> the only good thing was Ruby going heel. Full heel. Well, you knew that was going to happen, right? Ruby's a good heel. Ruby's yeah, a better is. heel. She is. She is. Ruby's a better heel. But I mean, it, I was a little surprised that you know Hater retained, but it was a good way to get Ruby Soho to go over as a heel to work with Soraya and Tony Storm. Yeah, for sure. But this this had no not oh not my Tony god Storm. moments. No, nah, it was that nothing. we wanted or wanted to see in that match. Like I barely remember half the match. Like yeah, what? No, that's <laughs> what I'm kind of going through right now. Um, but I mean, good on Jamie Hater, I guess. But whatever. Well, yeah, and- her uh, her her reign is just starting, so yeah. I couldn't imagine her losing this match. And it was quick, like it was real quick. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It, was it wasn't a long match. Yeah, but here, yeah. really quickly before we jump to the next subject, the other issue that I'm kind of interested to see. Hopefully, they. I mean, they're doing the Soraya thing, and she's the heel, but hopefully, they're going to do a long term deal with Britt Baker and starting to turn Britt Baker back heel to turn on Jamie Hayter because that was ultimately what I was looking forward to when uh, Hayter won the belt. I was like, oh, this means that Hayter will turn babyface, Britt will turn full-fledged heel, and they're going to have a a rivalry and fight each other. I think they're originally going to do that, but the fans kind of changed everyone's mind. Yeah, Mm -hmm. which, I mean... They like Britt. I mean, everybody, people like Britt Baker. She's she's very good and a good talent on the mic, so I mean, I, I don't... I don't necessarily disagree with it, but I still think that they need to uh, maybe again, long-term storytelling, get that to start progressing again so that eventually it does happen where, you know, jealousy or whatever, the fact that Brit Brit wants her belt back, whatever gets in the way and boom, it turns into hater versus Brit Baker, but we will see how that one goes. One thing that, uh, it's it's very difficult, and this happens with Seth and Becky. It's hard to like them both, or like one and hate one, or hate one and like it's. You either hate them both or like them both, and they all they all they all can't wait for 
Adam Cole to come back. So, <laughs> uh, in the meantime, they're gonna they love Adam. They gotta love her too. It's hard again. It's hard to hate one and like the other. Yeah, uh, that's, that's why you don't really see Becky doing the heel stuff. I mean, right now with her, right? Leo, she is the baby face. Yeah, because Peter. everyone loves Seth. Exactly. And Seth is obnoxious, but people still love him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but you know why? I, have to admit, oh. I, I love that I loved it when he said bye bye, bitch. It was great. Well, I love that. Bye, part. bitch. <laughs> so but yeah, I mean it's hard to hate, you know, Britt Baker. Because even when she was a heel. Yeah. No, just I, coming out and just doing the DMD. I mean, everybody was fucking rocking that shit. Oh gosh. The crowd the crowd loves the crowd loves that. Crowd loves oh I know. But um, this one was very lackluster. The AEW TNT Championship for Samoa Joe's title versus Wardlow. This match was a snooze. Yeah, and this one was worse than the women's match. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't too impressed with with uh, with with Samoa. He he didn't move very well. No, I don't know if I, again. I think I I think I think he's been hurt for a while. I think he's hasn't been a hundred percent. And uh, it kind of looked that way in this match too. Yeah, I, I can Wardlow agree doing it. his stuff. He didn't look that high, but yeah. I think Wardlow. And I guess the the mantra was, I guess, for those two going into the match, Samoa Joe again, no, know, knowing he was going to lose it, and knowing he's probably injured, he's like, I'm not going to put up much. Yeah, Do you think that's what happened? You think he didn't put 100 percent behind it? He it didn't, didn't look like it. it. Didn't look his like his knees it, were yeah. buckling too much. I honestly think his knees are still as fucked up as they were before. Uh, I, I said in the last in the, in the last video. I just I don't know why they put both belts on Samoa because he's injury prone and he's uh I mean no disrespect to Samoa Joe. The guy Yeah, no, great seriously, talent. no disrespect. Yeah. Great, great talent. Uh everybody I mean he's just when his when his when his music hits and Joe, Joe, Joe. Yeah, yeah. No, it's iconic. He, he's a badass dude. I just it's a lot of that's a lot of pressure to carry two belts. And mm-hmm. so I think he hopefully he's just gonna focus on helping those guys of Ring of Honor and and, and doing something over there. Yeah, I agree. And, and I felt bad for Joe, too, because I watched it and I was like, you know, this is not the Samoa Joe that we all knew and loved. So yeah. it was... It He's was also kinda... working a big man, too. Like, World looks huge. Joe's, yeah. usually, Joe's used to being the big man. That's true. He, yeah, he, big... he, was, he definitely was shadowed by Warlow. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's tough big man versus big man anyway. So, you yeah, know. just ask uh, Big Show when he took on fucking Ron Strowman. <laughs> yeah. All right. But no, nah, I I just I did feel but bad. That was that was built better. That, yeah, that feud was built better than this one. This one was kind of like, hey, we've got. Yeah, there wasn't guy. a lot to it. Again, I I think that I think Joe's been in and out of injury or whatever, and, mm-hmm. and just not putting doing what he could do with this. So yeah. we might see them again once Joe's fully healthy. Maybe. But on to powerhouse Hobbs. And that, that could, should be that could be week. very interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing what that. that like I said, like I said, week. put it on Warlow. Put it on Hobbs. Yeah, this yeah. week I'm gonna be home all week. Starting tonight, I'm watching Monday Night Raw. You know, I'm probably I'm probably gonna watch Roadblock because you know yeah. now that we're doing this, I now need to get more involved. <laughs> in that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that Powerhouse Hobbs is gonna be a great match. Yeah, even though he's carrying around a Sonic ring. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said, oh, look who won the cock ring. That's yeah, yeah, yeah but I like mine better. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulate. Ding, 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 ding. Um, and obviously uh, coming to an end here with the AW Championship, the 75 minute Iron Man. <laughs> hey, hour and 15 minutes, bro. <laughs> Come on. I mean, no, I, I'm not bashing it. It was great. Yeah, MJF versus Brian Danielson. You knew once it was a draw, three three. You knew Tony Khan wasn't gonna let it end a draw. Yeah. Um. But again, this one had you going. Who's gonna win it? I mean, Brian had the momentum. MJF had it at some points. Um. Well, even the people, MJF and Brian Danielson, even people running the scoreboard didn't know who was winning because they they had. Oh yeah, no, they're like that. The numbers were wrong. (laughs) Well, but here here's here's where they went a little wrong, and this is the one critique I will say. Uh, what they should have done is in between each fall, as soon because that's what got me confused too. In between each fall, have the bell ring. No. So, for example, oh, when they, yeah, I get it. Yeah, when yeah. they when they had the disqualification because that's what I even said when he hit. Do I miss that? I I caught it, but I missed it. I didn't realize the referee caught the uh, uh 
Yeah, he caught the the low blow. Caught the low blow well. and said, "Okay, that's a win for him. That's a win for Brian Danielson taking up 2-0. Yeah, and then with him down, MJF hit two two pins, pins causing it to go two two. But they should have had the bell ring in between each fall so that we knew something had happened when they didn't call, call for the bell. That's why the the first one was like when when Danielson got the first one, I was like, okay. I didn't hear the bell and it didn't really make uh, any difference to me. But then when the disqualification happened, that's like, that's what's missing. They're not ringing the bell in between each fall. And that's what made the difference. That's, that's why everybody got confused. Even the announcers were confused. So it made, then they got everything on track. So then you were able to follow it, but they, they really should. That's the only critique I would say of this match is they should have had the bell ring between each fall. Other than that phenomenal match again, MJF, doing the powder and stuff like that in wrestling terms, ladies and gentlemen, that means you go outside the ring and take a quick break. Uh, MJF powdering a lot was, was great. It just, it, you know, a long match needs, you know, a heel that is going to kind of do things, maybe not like dastardly things all the time, but things that will frustrate the opponent and him powdering like that, him doing like, you know, strutting around the ring, doing all kinds of different stuff. Him not like him taking his time made it all that much more enjoyable because you just like it was the hatred that built up for MJF because you're like, man, this guy he just he's a, he's just a, a, a natural ass. Well, and, and he, he really sold that during the one of the first like three powders he did was splashing a kid with water. Yes, that did you see that, Jason? Where he took the. So I did, and I listened to him talk about it in the media scrum too. Okay, well, if you, did you, you guys watch the media no, scrum? We no, did, but I do have a, a quote from Tony Khan. Okay, uh, yeah. Tony Khan did say, uh, "Quote: The young man Titus was a real pro about it. We'll see Titus again in AEW. I was with him, and he was a real champ about it. The champion didn't act like a champion there." So again, Titus did act like it, and the one comment on that post was, "If that were my mom, she would have made that a triple threat match." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, how old was Titus? Um, he was probably ranging between second and third grade. Yeah, so like nine, okay. eight, nine, maybe nine, eight, so, eight, to, eight to ten, somewhere in there. So, what did what did they what did they expect out of Titus? Did they expect Titus to rip his shirt off? <laughs> well, I, I was really like, I don't know. I was waiting him. for the mom to do something. Yeah, I was more waiting for the mom or to try security something. to do something with it, but nothing really came from it other than a massive pop of booze. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, but it's not. It's not going to be the Braun Strowman WrestleMania shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, if that happens, I'm. Uh, it's I'm it's very now. possible that they had somebody come out and say, "Hey, MJF is going to throw." Blah blah blah. Your grab your drink and throw it on you. Then we'll we'll buy you another one. Are you okay with that? And they're, you know, mom was like, "Fuck yeah, he's driving me crazy." <laughs> but I mean, Tony Khan met with the kid who got a drink thrown. He could have come out in between the matches. He could have snuck out. Yeah, without realizing it, because if MJF did it off script, then there's now a they have runners. That... They have runners to do that kind of stuff. That, yeah, that's also true. Yeah, they have runners. But but yeah, no. The, again, the pace was again like. I was tired last night, so it, to me it did drag a little bit, but that's not on them. It's just on the fact that I was tired. We knew we were in for it. Yeah, we were in 10.30. Yeah. Once, we, once we got 10.30, we were like, oh boy, here's the last one. 10.30, and we got to do another 60 minutes. Oh, and by the way, fuck, let's add 15. Yeah. And, and, and I love the funniest thing about this whole match was not just the kid getting the water in their face, because as as a paraprofessional, you, you have those moments, but you can't do it. Yeah. But, you're sitting there and you're like, okay. And then as the bell rings, as the, you know, the tie, and then, oh, MJF pertains, you know. Yeah. Tony goes, hold on, I'm getting a communication. <laughs> uh -huh. That yeah. was funny. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, my. okay. And he goes down to the ring and he doesn't even run. He's just like, yep, I'm going to do my shit. <laughs> He's like, yep, here we go. The whole time that uh, at Tony's, the quote you read, Tony's talking about how uh, the champion was not being a real champion. And the whole time MJ's going, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, oh, he's a real. Oh, Titus, real salt of the earth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's but, such a, he's a heel from from the top to bottom. He yeah, never breaks, never he, breaks he, gimmick. Never breaks gimmick. Never breaks absolute, gimmick. The way he meets fans is the same way. When they're taking video or when they have an you, autograph, he ends up either destroying it or throwing it on the floor. You, you I mean, have to see. He, last night he was eating pickles. I did see oh, that. I didn't. Watch, I haven't listened to it yet. And he, he kept saying, he said to a guy, he "Goes, hey, you want one of these pickles? Come up here, idiot." 
Come get in it. Come get it. Come get it. Come on, stupid. Come get in it. The guy grabbed a pickle. He said, take a big bite. He took a bite. He said, was it good? I don't give a shit. Go sit the fuck down. Like he, <laughs> like he, MJF is. is. Oh, he's a class like, act. I mean, I love I love watching clips of people meeting him at conventions, getting autographs by mm-hmm. him because he really he really sells it. And the one that I always will love is when he meets a little girl or a little boy with his with their dad. And he's sitting there and goes, I bet you your dad regrets having you. <laughs> well, you know, you, you saw the one where uh, the guy that was in the wheelchair. Oh yeah, I've yeah, seen that I, one. I haven't yeah. seen that. I haven't one. seen that. That's, one. Oh, God. that's a good one. That's a good one. I'll wow. show you after. I bet yeah. you wish you had legs right now. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he, no. He doesn't hold punches. Oh. He, he, MJF, MJF does not give a shit. Like he is, he's great. Okay. Yeah, he's great. He's got he's got a long run in him. Oh, he's yes, gonna, he yeah. And I think after signing that long term contract with AEW, I mean, he's gonna be a long running champ, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, oh. that match again, phenomenal. The blood was in, like, again, even though we had seen blood with the Moxley match, though, the blood was in the right place. The, I, and I would actually, the one thing that I was also, the only, the only other downside to me was the dynamite diamond ring part of it. That was funny. <laughs> it, it was good, but here's the thing that I think should have been, they should have done differently. Um, so I didn't like the, um, uh, oxygen tank spot. Okay. It was good for what it was, but I think they could have done something more with the ring instead of the ref putting the ring in his pocket, taking the ring, giving it to the freaking one of the, uh, attendants on the outside of the ring. And then MJF going down outside of the ring. And like, you know, when he's down, grabs that attendant grabs the ring because the 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 canister was too big the ref should have seen the can like even though it was a quick shot over his head on daniel brian or brian danielson's head it was over the lip of the ring the ref should have seen something so the ring would have been a better they shot that perfectly by the way they did shoot it perfectly the cameraman was in the exact right place the whole crawling where you just saw him peek up over, yeah. Brian Danielson just yeah, peeked just up over, and, like, but but the shot perfectly. The ring, the ring would have been the better uh, gimmick to use in that scenario because again, it's on his pinky. You know, like he could have just pop one shot on Brian Danielson's head. Yeah, well, you know they've used that diamond ring. I don't know how many times now. So I, I, and I did, if you're and complaining about somebody true. using it's the same moveset all the time, ring. right? It is true. It is right. true. They, they switched up their moveset, Scott. You're pissed off. No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not pissed <laughs> off. I just I think that the again the gimmick the the oxygen hand gimmick was too big. That's just that's my takeaway from it. That, hey, uh, I'm gonna let you know something. Um, sometimes. Wrestling is fake. I don't want to. I don't want to give away any anybody secrets. watching this podcast. I hope you're not new. <laughs> sometimes, oh. sometimes it's funny when shit like that happens, and you're like, "Oh, how do they not see that?" And it's that's the I best part. If they'd have used that diamond character. ring today, Scott, if they'd have used that diamond ring, you'd have been like, "I can't believe they used that diamond ring again." But unbelievable, it's- they use that diamond ring every time. That's all they do. That's his old move. He can't do anything else. What's what's MJF's finisher? Somebody else's. What's MJF's finisher? I honestly don't even know. Diamond ring, bro. Yeah. Well, it's a diamond ring. Now he's gonna have he steal somebody else's submission. Yeah, but he, but yeah. the thing about it is, is it in between the, the diamond shot ring, oxygen tank? <laughs> they only use the diamond ring. Like it's not like they use the diamond ring like five hundred times in a match. That's the that's the key issue. The difference. They only use it one time, and it counts for something. Every time they use it, but every every time. every time, and I do agree with that. There is a bit of an overuse of the ring, but it's still a one shot deal. It's the knockout blow instead of a super kick, which never knocks anybody out. Uh, you know, again, it used to with HBK. Yeah, you know, it used to with like, Rikishi. One shot with a super kick, you were gone. It's because Rikishi's four hundred fucking pounds. I know, but again, the super kick was like it's a big ass foot. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if, if Rikishi didn't I, run into your face with his ass, you were like, "Okay, where's the stink <laughs> face? I pay for the stink face." <laughs> hey, I mean, listen, give they credit, did, they did your, something different. In... They 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 tried to sell you the diamond ring like they were going to use a diamond ring. And that was they... funny when he was in the submission. The ref's like, "You know what? I'm just gonna 
Yeah. So that and again, gonna, I'm was, just going to mug you. <laughs> I'm going to steal your rings. You ain't going to need this no more. You about to it, lose. And I have to admit, I love the referee that entire match, especially when MJF's like, you know, I'm fucking tired of this. He grabs his belt. He goes, you know what? Go for it. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. If you want to, go for that it. That was kind of funny. I've never seen a ref act like that almost that reminded me of an Earl Hevner or a Mike Kyoto style like he's attitude. Like, I'm not stopping you. Yeah, no, he's like, I'm you just, know, I'm Ky- done. Ky- when Kyoto got pissed off, you know, Kyoto would have that same style of attitude. So I love that. I did I love that ref spot. Because when we're watching it, I'm like, man, this ref is just <laughs> he's just like, you know, like fucking go. go. I'm done. Go. <laughs> he's it's like, I'll just qualify you, but go ahead and do it. I don't care. Just go ahead and hit him. That was that was again. That was a a good spot. So yeah, I agree with you that they do use the diamond ring, and and it was a unique spot for him to take the ring off the finger and put it. That was I love that part. He's just that like, was yeah, unique. you're not using that right now. I'm just gonna go like yeah, <laughs> thank you. So what elderly person is missing your oxygen tank today? <laughs> <laughs> I, I admit I love that oxygen tank. Man, the hit that that thing made against Daniels' head. Well, he got his hand up, but I don't know if he got all of his hand to completely block it because MJ swung it. Yeah, well, he, he, swung, he, it, he, he swung it blind. He swung he it over his head. So. Oh, well, he was get, I don't know where he was getting his cues from. Or maybe I, I, I was trying to watch Danielson's mouth if he was letting him know he was coming. But, boy, he, he clocked him. Yeah. He and I mean, you him. could hear that thing through the arena. You did. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. So, it was good. It was good. But it was me. a great, great way it. to end Revolution last night. Yeah. So, all in all. How long did you sit there and watch the ramp? Like, cause it was funny because after he won. After he won, everyone was staring at the ring. Oh, so part of my who dumb ass like, on? We're CM. CM we're the Punk. We CM. For sure CM Punk was coming. Yeah. I was like, come on. I know you got time. Come on. What yeah. As soon as he, as soon as everybody looked at the ramp, I went, da 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 Come on. I was waiting. Play my like, music. Okay, he just said he's the best in the world. Come on. Who's next? Come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I think it, like if Punk even was going to come back, I think don't think they should have done it here though because why not a big pay review i i mean again you've got millions tuning in uh dave and buster select movie theaters people <laughs> in foreign countries, yeah i wouldn't do it here and all this why wouldn't you do it yeah see you friday night <laughs> no i mean no here's the thing about <laughs> on it on aew dark <laughs> <laughs> no it's okay in we'll my led to view, the ring by sunny kiss <laughs> yeah all right oh god no it's about building it up so you know, yeah, it was a good pay for you. They had a good ending. Uh, you know, punk, like, but I don't think if they're gonna bring Punk back, don't just immediately bring him back. Don't just immediately say, "Oh, we're gonna," you know, just to, to capture the last minute audience, we're gonna we're gonna bring Punk right back in. Build it. Let MJF keep talking. Let MJF be like. Well, and if you and, watch the media scrum, he did the same thing that CM Punk did. He yeah. wore the towel around his around it the same way that yeah. Punk did. So he's poking fun at but but keep building that, keep building that over the next month, and then when they're in Vegas for Double or Nothing, that might might be the best place to bring him back. When are they? When are they back in Chicago? That's another good question. When are they back in Chicago? Yeah, that's the best place to do that. Uh, that yeah, no, I agree. I mean, Chicago- get free ice cream when we go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah, you you give me I'm that. In. I'm in. So yeah, I don't know. again. Overall, I mean, I'd give that pay per view about if, a, if it's out of if it's out of ten. Where where are we sitting? Six point five out of ten. I mean, it definitely had I'd go a little higher. I'd, I'm gonna run a seven, seven and a half. I think. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that pay per view around a uh, seven. And a, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I think why it's right. Six I think, seven and a half. I, I think for the I think for the most part, all the matches were bangers. I wasn't there was a there was there was a couple matches in there that that they can't all be bangers, right? They, yeah, it, no. it's very hard. It's very hard to book book. A show where ten fucking matches, by the way, yeah, or nine matches or whatever it was, it should have been ten, but they fucked it. <laughs> they, they, they botched the uh, one match. <laughs> uh, we still be sitting here if they had a tenth match. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. uh, it's hard to book a show with nine matches on it, honestly, and they all they all rip right. They 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 open the show. You sh- you should open the show with a big with a big pop. Uh, I I don't know that they did that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it but, wasn't. Yeah, no, that was not the best start. Uh, I might have started with that that four way tag team match because everybody loves the acclaim. So um, the acclaim, Orange Cassidy and Dan House were the. Yep, yeah, I, I mean that would have got the crowd into it immediately. Like, or into- or or even the the trios might have started because that would have been a good start people, too. 
any anything that you can get the crowd into when they when they play that Kansas song, the crowd loves you know <laughs> sing, singing that. So uh, apparently yeah. the crowd the, apparently the crowd loves singing Jericho's theme song too. They you know? do, which makes it difficult for him to be a heel if if everybody loves his music. Well, then take yeah, that, take away the song. Like, that, like did Jericho? If Jericho, Jericho really wants, will never so let Jericho's you trying to sell. He's trying to sell records, bro. But but here's the thing: if he really wants to be a good heel, he takes away the song from the nah, crowd. He's getting paid regardless. Yeah, he's yeah. getting money off the royalties on that. So that's yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a genius marketer, which is really sad to say. You know that WWE? Remember they switched up Shinsuke's song because everybody was singing Shinsuke's song. I don't know when they decide that they uh, maybe they won't do it to uh, Seth Rollins. They won't change his music because the crowd loves into that song. Shit. Loves yeah. it. I do too. Loves I do. I, I sing along. <laughs> yeah, no, that's. But yeah, but yeah, I, I I agree with Wyatt. I would say it's around a seven, seven and a half. This is a good pay per view. Not yeah. enough surprises for me. I would like to see a couple more surprises, but if all their surprises are hurt, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, and again, yeah, Adam Cole's return back on March twenty sixth. Mystery opponent. Considering he left that as a gaping hole, but again, big whoop. We'll see what happens. But hey, I mean, they might have something built for that too. That could be an interesting. What's the next? What's the next AEW pay per view? Double or nothing. Double or nothing in May twenty eighth in Vegas. May. Yeah. May twenty eighth. Which I'll beat it in Annapolis, so I can't watch it. Oh, well, I'm going to the five hundred. (laughs) So, gotcha. Um, but yeah. I think that does it for this week's show, uh, for at least for the review part of the show. Good yeah. job, boys. We were a lot, lot less negative this time. Yeah, yeah no, we were working so. a new one on Friday, yeah. <laughs> Friday night. We and I, I think we need to be a little bit more positive uh, for for this type of thing. I mean, it's okay to rip them when they're bad, but uh, I think we did a, not a bad. We, yeah. we, we just did a 60-minute Iron Man match of podcasts. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And we, I mean, I, you know, again, there's a lot more to come down the line. Uh, if uh, we talked about this, if we reach 100 subscribers, um, we are going to give a giveaway T-shirt in the uh, wrestling unboxing that Jason does on the yep. channel. There we go. Yep. Which I um, sent you the wrong unboxing, by the way. I sent you like the little clip, uh, the to get everybody to come watch the unboxing. But I re I reposted it. Um, uh, reposted the the unboxing. You can check that out. Uh, these unboxings from Pro Wrestling Tees, I love them. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, they're fun. So if we hit a as soon as we hit a hundred subscribers, we are going to we're gonna do the unboxing. Well, maybe we do the unboxing live. What do you think? Yeah, that's yeah, I mean, if if we want, we can try to find something that we can possibly do a giveaway on. Um, yeah, I get paid Friday, so I could actually set up an overhead camera, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we can do that definitely. Yeah, we do. We can do whatever. Sky's the limit. Uh, but we're we're definitely we're gonna give away. They we I I usually get two shirts. I'll let you guys pick or let whoever pick whatever shirt they want. We'll ship it right out to you. There we go. Yeah. And again, if if again, if you want a wrestling figure that you can't find or something, maybe you can send us your details on what you're looking for. And when we go out to toy shows or toy shops, we can look for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you guys are gonna be doing that kind of stuff. Now, I'm gonna jump in there every once in a while. I don't do as many toy hunts as you guys do. I'm a little bit more we specific. Been out in, a long, in a while, yeah, it's been a while. Been Did a you while. you didn't go? You didn't go on Sunday. You didn't go nah. to the Green Castle show on Sunday. No, nah, we. Uh, I just stayed home and chilled Sunday because I needed it. Gotcha. And I was watching Formula One IndyCar, so. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> I needed those in my life. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna do a lot of different things, and if honestly, if there's something you want to see or you want us to do, yeah, we don't give a shit. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. You know, we'll do it. And uh, like, feel free, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, post comments in the comment section, things that you're interested in seeing wrestling wise, uh, questions you might have. Tell Scott why he's wrong. Yeah, <laughs> that's I mean, that's basically what I want. Yeah, well, if you well, can just post in the see, comments, we'll why about that we'll see about that. Why Scott keeps uh, cut I, wide I off see, every time I can talks. see more people ripping you than ripping me. But we'll see. Ooh, probably, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I mean, I've been divorced twice. You can't hurt my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> obviously, the other thing that's coming up is I'll be working with Jason at his wrestling company on March 18th. Um. So if you guys live I'm in the area, with the chair. I swear to God. Okay. <laughs> now I'll take them out. Yeah. No, uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing a lot of things wrestling oriented. When it's not gonna be just talking about pay per views and that kind of stuff. We're gonna yeah. be doing. We're gonna be we're we're uh, why it's gonna watch Raw tonight. I'll watch it tomorrow on my way to work or during work. <laughs> and we'll, maybe we maybe we come on and we do like 30 minutes, knock it out, whatever, discuss it. 
or do, do it. like a midweek check in, see how everything's going so far. Sure, sure, sure. yeah. Uh, and then well, the because fiasco. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm connected with some indie guys. We're gonna do some indie interviews. Uh, maybe you guys will see some up and coming stars. We got a lot. I I actually know a lot of guys that are very talented that are on their way um, uh, to being bigger and better and probably never speaking to me again, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the guy you interviewed at, uh, what was it? Real shot wrestling. Yeah. Seen really yeah. nice at the end of the video. Really. Yeah. Laid back uh, really Tip well. cross. He's the guy's amazing. I just met him that night. Um, friend of mine uh, invited me to say, Hey, there's wrestling in this area. So I was like, eh, I'm on my way. Fuck it. Three hours, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and he introduced yeah. me to Tim and man, I got put together a hell of a card. It was, they ran like, I don't know, 10 matches. The main event was a tag team championship for uh, the end of the tournament they had that night. And we thought it was over, but it wasn't. <laughs> they had a main event for the uh, belt for belt uh, internet championship versus world championship. And they crowned a new title, new champion. And uh, you guys can check that video out. It's up. It's uh, up Tim, Tim runs an amazing uh, uh, real shoot wrestling. <laughs> RSW. So. Nice. Yeah, so uh lots of stuff coming down the pipe. We look forward to it. I mean, we're already at seven subscribers on YouTube already. So what? yeah, man. yeah. My mom, what? she clicked yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's putting Jason in the refrigerator now. <laughs> she actually goes, I said, she goes, I saw I did I see you on the radio? I was like, Well, no. <laughs> no, not on the radio. You if don't you could see, see me through the radio, radio. <laughs> what, what drugs you taking? Because I want yeah, something. Yeah. I was like, you need to have your medication changed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that does it here for tonight. Uh this video is going out as soon as I get upstairs and edit it down, which won't take me long. So well. But hey, guys, we'll be back. Uh, we'll talk about when we want to come back, and we'll see you guys then. All right. I'll see you. Peace.